Welcome to Skin Interviews with Nathan and George. I am the George of this equation, and that is the Nathan of the equation. How are you tonight, George? Are you know, man? I'm I'm good. I, but I'm I'm listen. I'm not gonna lie. We've had some big interviews that have happened, but today I'm kind of feeling a little off. Uh, not I wouldn't say off, but I feel pressured. It's not every day that I'm doing, you know. A side project, but in my side project, I'm on a platform with not one boss, but two bosses. So I've got, you know, I've got to be on my A game tonight because, you know, I got you. You're the one boss from nine to five, but now we're bringing in the big boss from nine to five. You know, I, I have to agree, George. I'm a little bit nervous as well. Like, we better bring our A game tonight. Okay, well, we let's 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 just. Is my hair looking all right? Yeah. Well, it, it could look better, but you know, COVID. COVID, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know what? Uh, enough about us, because this guy's gonna have a lot to say. He's uh, he's an amazing guy in the industry. I've known him years before I worked for him. Um, always a good laugh, always a good story, and I guarantee this is gonna be a great interview uh, with a good getting to know him. Without further ado, let's bring on to the show. Mr. Mike Vivier. Mike, how's it going? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I, I'm, I'm feeling pressured, Mike. I'm feeling pressured. No pressure. No pressure, George. Okay, however this goes, you can't yell at me tomorrow from 9 to 5. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fire you. <laughs> Am I going to get a call from HR tomorrow? <laughs> we're, we're probably all going to get a call from HR tomorrow. Yeah, oh, I'll, no. I'll be the case. In, Cheers, in that case, oh, you are you guys both drinking? Cheers, oh, guys. Nice. What what is that you're drinking, Mike? Uh, this is a, a funny story. So, a good friend of mine, his his company, his business makes dog treats, and another friend of mine owns a brewery. And so, the whole story of this beer is that this is actually a treat from the dog to the owner. So the <laughs> owner can give the dog a dog treat, and the dog, <laughs> your dog, in this case. This lab gave me this beer. I love that is it. Amazing. I Great really want beer. It's a, 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 a brewery that's uh, here in uh, in Hudson, Quebec. They just moved out to a little town called Les Cedre, and it's yeah. called Brasserie de Bois Blanc. Great beer. Love it. I've only had I've only had one today though. <laughs> have a couple. Have a couple. You might need them for the interview. <laughs> So I'm. I mean, I know quite a bit about you. So some of the stuff I already know, but I'm hoping I'm going to learn stuff about you that I don't know. And there's a ton of people that don't know uh, what we're going to ask you today. So I'm going to go right back to the beginning. Mom's name is Cindy. Dad's name is Jess. Jess Vivier, of course. So Cindy gives birth to beautiful Mike. You come out. Was the name always Mike Vivier? Is there a middle name? Was it something else that changed? Yeah, so my full name is Michael Edmund Vivier. I'm the fifth generation of uh, Edmonds. Uh, my son now is the sixth. Uh, I think my parents, which was kind of funny, is they chose Michael and obviously Steve, my brother, the two most popular boys' names of 1983 and 1986. <laughs> they couldn't be uh, any more original than that. Uh, my mom grew up quite uh, religious and going to church, so... Michael, obviously, is a more of a biblical name. And uh, from what I understand, it's uh, he who is like God. I am far from it. So I don't know why they gave me that name. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that was how I got my name. So well, I know now that, well, and our viewers know now that you've got a brother named Steve. And we know about Cindy, your mom, and just your dad. You two are married and you have two kids. Uh, your son's middle name is Edmund. Tell me about your family. So um, I met my wife, Claire, actually 17 years ago uh, back at university. We hit it off right away. and We've been together ever since. Uh, the love of my life, how she puts up with me, one will never know. <laughs> she uh, gave me two beautiful kids, my daughter, Chelsea, who's 11, and my little son, uh, Nicholas, who is eight. So it's amazing how fast it goes. And we, we got started a little on the early side. I uh, was married pretty much right out of university. And then within the, the year, we had Chelsea, and two and a half years later, had Nick. So it's been a blessing. That's amazing. 
Awesome. So, Mike, tell me a little bit about growing up with your brother and tell me a little bit about elementary school and, and high school. So growing up, I mean, uh, with my brother, we've always been close. We have a very close family, uh, both uh, with my brother and, and mom, dad, but also our extended family. So I'm very close with my cousins, my aunts, my uncles. Uh, we were very blessed that way. Steve and I got along for the most part. Uh, I saw you to pin him down and tickle him and do all kinds of crazy things to him. Poor guy. Um, but yeah, we've, we've always worked well together. We had a number of small businesses together growing up. We used to sell actually bagged granular fertilizer, like your Scott's fertilizer, door to door. Yay. And uh, we had a lot of fun. We, we, uh, we've always got along quite well. Cool. And so I know about you always being an entrepreneur or having that entrepreneurial kind of background. What was the dream when you were growing up? Well, it was funny because although I'd had a number of small businesses when I was younger, being very entrepreneurial, I loved the freedom of uh, being able to create, create a business, create something and watch it grow and have amazing products, be it skincare or fertilizer, whatever it happens to be, to help people. And um, I guess it was sort of along that sort of way in vain that uh, that innate business sense was always there. I actually wanted to be a professional baseball player growing up. Baseball was was my sport. Uh, made it all the way up to basically the point where I had to go or had to look at going away to training camps in Florida. And um, I figured, you know, I was pretty good at baseball, but I wasn't that good. So probably a good idea to go to school and focus on university. And so that led me to, um, to going to business school and choosing business as a, as a career. And then we started the company, it's hard to believe, 20 years ago as a family. And um, starting that business was just a love and a passion and has been now for those 20 years. I must say congratulations for those 20 years. And it's and for me personally, it's been a, an honor to be part of it. And I, I know I speak for George as well. We've, we've been lucky enough to be part of it for three years. So congratulations to... <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're very lucky to have you guys. We've got a beautiful team. Um, and I mean, it's we have a lot of fun. We all work really hard, which is great. And uh, but at the end of the day, we have fun. And we, we're helping, you know, trying to help make the, the world a better place. Yeah. So I want to talk to you a little bit about heroes. Now, you obviously have your your dad, and, and we'll, we'll talk about him a, a little bit later. But and you obviously have your brother. And I know you and your brother both look up to each other um mm -hmm. but tell me about other heroes in your life other people that you've looked up to along the way yeah i um i love the the foo fighters and uh they have a, a great song called hero and basically i always looked up to ordinary people i never really looked up to um celebrities these types of things my father was always my hero because he always spent a lot of time with us as a child uh, he was very involved. He coached our baseball, uh, you know, drove us everywhere to all of our sports and really taught us business from a very young age. Uh, we used to have business conversations in the yard or swimming in the pool. Um, so I really looked up to him and I looked up to a lot of his friends. I looked up to a lot of people like, um, you know, people in the world that are making a, a big impact and change. Mother Teresa and the Queen and I mean, just phenomenal people that are movers and shakers who are, again, trying to make the world a better place. Um, those are the people that I really looked up to. Now, you can't have a beer or a drink of vodka with Mike Vivier without him telling a funny story. So I know you've got a lot of funny stories because we happen to know you well, but I'd love you to tell us a funny story to the viewers who don't know you, know you so well tonight. Yeah, I'll keep it PG because I know Skin Interviews is a family programming. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, we might have to put an R18 clause on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you, are you ready to censor this? Or? <laughs> we might have to, yeah. Actually, one of the funniest stories that, that comes to mind um, is actually with a <laughs> – speaking of physicians and doctors and what we do – is uh, at now we're with a, a physician who's an ER doctor uh, who happens to be one of my, my wife's best friends. And uh, several years ago when we were in university, she came to visit us over the weekend and we tried to make it really comforting for her. So we changed our bed and our sheets and everything and we made a little makeshift bed on the floor and we said, well, you can have our bed. 
And Claire and I will sleep on the floor. Of course, well, the girls all went out partying. And I went out uh, partying that evening. And uh, those time, <laughs> during those times, I was partying quite heavily. So I saunter in at around 4.30 a.m. Of course, I'm trying to be quiet and I'm fumbling around. And I, I take all my clothes off. And here I am tiptoeing through the tiptoeing through the hall. And, of course, I get into bed on the, on the floor. And I get in there. And I'm spooning, <laughs> I'm spooning with who I think is my wife, but they decided to switch up between the bed and the floor. But here I am, and I basically pass out. And I'm like, like a big bear, you know, bear hugging. <laughs> my wife's best friend. And anyway, she was like, Mike, Mike, what are you doing? I'm like, oh. So I say her name, and she's like, and then I hear Claire in the bed. I was like, oh, boy. So I kind of crawl <laughs> back out from the sheets and hop back in the other bed. But anyways, we had a good chuckle about it in the morning, how I ended up uh, getting into bed getting into bed with her. <laughs> Amazing. And listen, anybody that knows you knows that you've got thousands upon thousands of these types of stories. So this is just a little snippet of how humorous um, Mike Vivier is. So... I want to take you, to, let's remain in those younger teenage years, elementary school years. Who was your first love? Um, actually, so my first love, I was in, um, I would say love, it was a very strong word. I actually got started when I was quite young. My first kiss was when I was about four years old with a girl named Kara Kylie. Um, Where's Kara Kylie today? Oh, um, I don't even know. She's I really hope Kara Kylie is using therapy, that's for sure. I hope she's using Vivier skin. Does she know who she kissed? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that started young, and then I had my first girlfriend actually in grade four, and I was talking to my parents about this the other day. It was quite crazy because um, I, I have a daughter now at that age, and um, I, I used to go over to her house. I take the bus to her house, and her parents worked late. And we were around at her place, but then my parents would take us to skating on the weekend and we went on dates and they drop us off and her parents would drop us off. And so my first girlfriend was when I was in grade four and my first love was in high school in grade eight, which was a girl by the name of Amanda Oliver. And uh, she's married to a wonderful guy and they've got a beautiful family. And I still get to see her from time to time. I'm still get a chance to see your sister and her parents who are they're just a wonderful family. That's amazing. I want to know now, so I understand what your taste is like, because uh, I've seen your wife and she's a beautiful woman, but um, I want to know who your first celebrity crush was or who's the woman that may make you leave your wife for her. Like, I mean, if JLo knocks on the door, are you second thinking this or are you just like, bye? So when I was a teen, it was uh, Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Oh, Saved by the Bell. I, uh, I, uh, I mean, man, I don't know what it was, but she, uh, she just did it. <laughs> 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 she, she still does it. <laughs> I'm, I'm blushing as we talk about it. <laughs> That's so amazing. She, so if she showed up and rang the doorbell, then. I would have to do a lot of thinking. <laughs> I, would need, I, would need, I would need to call my lawyer right away. <laughs> Mike, were you ever bullied growing up? Uh, interestingly enough, um, I think everyone is bullied to a certain extent. Uh, everyone goes through different phases. Uh, but I was a fighter and a scrapper, so I was picked on and bullied a bit. Uh, but then um, I, I kind of made a couple bold statements through a couple of fights, and then I was left alone. Do you think bullies are worse as children or as adults? Well, Because adult bullying is the real thing. Absolutely. I think, I mean, well, now I see the, what kids are going through and how bullying has changed. Back when we went to school, <clears throat> bullying happened through for a certain portion of the day. And you could kind of go home at the end of the day and es escape some of that. Um, and there were different outlets and different groups, but now with social media and things that are live, I see these kids that are not only getting bullied at school, is that there's this cyber bullying, these types of cases. Um, I'm actually involved in all of our local, or I should say all of our local schools, but some of our local schools, I've sat on the governing boards and the uh, parent committees, 
And one of the things that we have, adop have adopted in our local schools is um, a no bullying policy. So we actually have pink t-shirt days. We raise mon money, we raise funds, we raise awareness. And our schools have taken a stance of there's no bullying period. It's just not tolerated. So if any of that does happen, um, there are pretty harsh um, sort of, I wouldn't say penalties, but there's it's pretty harsh in terms of the, the punishments that are there. And then we can actually remove students from our schools uh, if there is that continuing. So it's changed a lot. That's good. That's good. I know you're leaving it there. I want to know the last lie you told your children. <laughs> oh, man, there's so many of them. <laughs> Again, I'm trying to think about which ones are appropriate. Um, <laughs> That's the story of your life, though, Mike, really, isn't it? I'll tell you the last one is that we told them that mommy and daddy were going upstairs to hang paintings. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Oh, oh my God. I can tell you that there were no paintings hung, but a few fell off the wall. This <laughs> <laughs> is whatever works. I, I, I hear you. So There are so I, many lies. That's the immediate one that comes to mind, though. That was uh, about an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, terrible, terrible. oh, that's amazing. Look, my my next question usually at this point of the interview is to talk about hidden talents. And I'm going to bring up one of the hidden talents of yours that I know. So we avoid anything that has to do with painting being discussed. <laughs> but um, you are a talented musician. And a lot of people don't know that. Well, I wouldn't say necessarily talented, but uh, thank you, George. I appreciate that. Uh, growing up, actually, my mom is a, a professional uh, pianist. And so we actually learned Steve and I piano from a very young age. And then um, from piano in, in uh, high school, actually, I started playing the saxophone, the tenor saxophone. And um, what was really cool is I used to play in a jazz band, a traveling jazz band. And with our school band, uh, we used to do competitions. We won a competition in Toronto and Chicago. We actually went down to Walt Disney World and uh, Orlando. I got a chance to play in the studios, uh, which is really quite neat. And then throughout high school as well, I picked up the guitar, and my brother is pretty much a professional drummer. So we used to play in a lot of bands, and uh, pre-kids, I actually toured a bit in Quebec, a little bit in uh, Toronto, played a few really cool gigs downtown Toronto, from what I remember of them. And uh, basically, yeah, it's just always been a love and a passion, and I think the most wonderful thing about music is that you, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect, you don't have to be amazing at it, but... It's just such a great release, especially during these times. Um, it's a great stress reliever. It's something I really love. I love practicing and trying to get better and better. I think it's a lifelong quest music. Amazing. So, Mike, if everyone that knows you well knows that you love to do two things. And one of them is cooking. And the second one is entertaining. So this next mm -hmm. question is right up your alley. If you were to invite three people, any three people you want, living or dead, over for dinner, who would the three people be and why? And uh, what would you cook them? Yeah, so um, basically, I'm a big fan of comedy. I love to laugh. I try to make people laugh. No. I would invite uh, Jim Jeffries, Eliza Schlesinger, and Joe Coy. I think it would be uh, one, one, one funny dinner. And just that random eclectic group of of comedians, because I think the three of them together would be would be jokes. And yeah. uh, I make barbecue, so I love barbecue. I um, have a wonderful Traeger smoker. Big big plug for Traeger. If you don't know what they are, look them up. You can control it from your uh, from your phone, an app. What's really cool is that it's actually a barbecue, a smoker, and an oven all in one. So I would make them, uh, I'd make them something on the trekker. Awesome, awesome. Now this next question, I'm a little bit scared to ask my boss this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. What is the first thing you do when you wake up? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a uh, SSS kind of guy, yeah. which is uh, a shower, a shit, and a shave. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> I'm a very clean guy. I have a shower in the morning and a shower at night. 
Yeah. I like uh, to groom and keep my personal hygiene at its finest. So I will uh, typically have a shower and I will have a shave and then uh, I saunter down and my wife is very good. She gets up with the kids and usually we'll start breakfast and then uh, I'll have a coffee. The coffee is essential. Cool, cool. Now I've got a photo here and this is going to help the viewers understand the next question. Cause the oh, next boy. Question, oh boy. Yeah. The next question is sort of uh, about defining uh a moment that led you to your, your current profession. And I think these moments here when you were a young kid around the kitchen table could have a huge influence on your current profession right now. So talk us through these photos. Yeah. So uh, this is, uh, this is quite funny. This is us uh, when we actually started 20 years ago. Um, so like any great company, um, that's you have to start somewhere. You you don't have any volume, and you don't. There's no demand for your product, uh, but you have a vision and a dream. And so um, the first picture you can see, Jess has that big brown sort of jug with a pump. Uh, the serums that we first launched, that was, everything was made in a pharmaceutical facility. It was shipped that way, and we didn't have any volume for production. We couldn't find anyone to produce our products. So we did it ourselves. So Jess would fill the serum bottle and then the serum bottles would go over to the next photo on the top right is Steve and I, and you can see I have a label. I'm labeling the serums and the boxes are open. So we would hand label each serum and then each serum, as you can see in the bottom left photo, uh, Steve is taking serum bottles that have been stickered and putting them into the boxes. And then um, as the volume increased, the last photo is that we had uh, local friends, kids in the neighborhood that we all knew, the parents. Uh, they'd come over, and then on weekends, uh, we, would, we would assemble the product, and we would make the product. And then as I got a bit older, what was really a lot of fun is I got to put on my first suit and went to go start seeing some physicians here in around Montreal and Quebec and brought them the product and they loved it. And uh, we just started from there. So Vivier really started with a dream and started out of the kitchen of, of our house and has grown now to be an international pharmaceutical company in over 20 countries around the world. So it's been quite amazing. But along the way, I have to say, we've had some amazing employees. Um, you know, having a dream is one thing, getting there is another, it takes an army. And that's why I'm so happy where we're at now. And to have you guys on the team is, is tremendous. And I mean, phenomenal people make phenomenal companies. 100%. 100%. I, lo I love that answer. And I've, if you can see my hand here, there's hairs sticking up on the, the back of my hand. <laughs> it was a long time. I'm getting old, guys. I've been doing this now for hard time. <laughs> I'm telling people I'm only 37. But in those photos, I was 17. I've been doing it for 20 years already. And Mike, the three of us know we we live in a, a fast industry. It's it's, it's action packed. It's, mm. it's it's a very rewarding industry. But this industry is an industry that rewards people that work very very hard. And 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 there's a sometimes a price to pay for that um, as an individual. What is what is something you wished maybe outsiders or other people knew about our profession? Yeah. So I think everyone looking in thinks that the aesthetic. Uh, world is a vain world and it's it's really not if you look at a lot of the uh, neurotoxins and fillers what their primary uses for um, are, are designed to really help people with different conditions um, everything that we do as well their products are primarily designed to treat different skin conditions yes there have uh, they all have aesthetic anti-aging properties and we can have a beautiful skin but it's important to have a uh, healthy skin. Absolutely. Awesome. Now, you got into this industry at a very young age, and yeah. there's a lot of people maybe watching right now that are wanting to get into the industry. Um, talk us through maybe a mistake that you've made or an obstacle that you've come over, had to overcome in your career and and sort of how you overcome it or how you learned from that for, for some of the younger people watching today? Yeah. So I'd say, I mean, to, to finish on, on your last question and, and, and segue that into this question, um, bas basically this industry uh, also looks like an easy industry. We work extremely hard around the clock. 
Um, I think a lot of physicians and everyone um, in the industry doesn't really understand from a company or a corporate standpoint what goes into making your company successful and your product successful, um, which is, you know, which is so, so key. Um, I, I think earlier on in my career, and, and I think what we all learn is that you need to take your time to make decisions. There's no need to rush. And I think, you know, when you're younger, you always want to sort of fire from the hip and you're full of energy and passion. And when you're full of energy and passion, you can make a lot of decisions based on emotions versus rational decisions. So I've learned over the years to take my time, um, you know, to get your market data together, look at your numbers, do an analysis, deep dive into, into every bit of fact and data that you possibly can, do a 360 degree approach, ask those around you, collect that data, and then I think you're able to make the best possible decisions. So, you know, um, you make a lot of great decisions, which is great. Along the way, you make some not so great decisions. And I think it's about learning, right? It's about not, you know, trying to not repeat those mistakes as you move forward. Amazing. I want to ask you, you know, I mean, I remember a very specific moment over the course of the last year um, for some of the people that don't know during our national sales meeting, uh, Vivier takes the entire sales team um, and some of the marketing team as well and the support team to Jamaica. Uh, we've done this twice now. Uh, this uh, this last uh, trip that we had at a national sales meeting, I remember sitting with uh, Cindy Vivier, your mom, and Just Vivier, your dad, and they just had a moment while they were talking that they had a moment of awe about it's been 20 years now. And, and looking at those photos for me is is quite a, is quite emotional to see where it started and where it's gone to today. I want you to tell me three things over the course of 20 years, your most memorable moment, your favorite product, and something you would have done differently or at a different time. All right, so let's let's address them go one by one. First question. Most memorable moment over the course of 20 years. I would have to say um, it was this year, actually, at the national sales meeting when we had a chance to celebrate all together. It was such a, a, a beautiful moment because what we realized is we're so busy, we work so hard, and we, we, we are, we're so hard on ourselves to find all the things that we need to improve or, um, you know, uh, change. And often we don't take enough time along the way to celebrate our wins and to celebrate our success. And that was a really nice moment uh, after 20 years of just kind of coming up for air and saying, you know what, as a company, most companies fail to even get off the ground. It's a very, very low percentage of success rate, let alone a business to survive for five or 10, but into 15 and 20 years, that means that you've weathered a lot of storms and your business models had to significantly change and you've had to be extremely innovative over 20 years to survive. And we're continuing to innovate today. Uh, probably we're in some of the most challenging times in terms of innovation. Uh, but the long-term vision is to be around for another 20 years. And so that's what I my major concern is, is making sure that we make all the strategic decisions to ensure that Vivier um, stays the company that it is for, for many more years and hopefully generations to come. So question number two then. Uh, and this one's a hard one for you. Your favorite product over the course of 20 years. Oh, my Lord. Um, so I would have to say that that my favorite is CE peptides. I've been a, a loyal fan and user. Um, I, I love it because it's the only serum in the market that has the three major or the essential parts to boost and promote collagen in the skin. So Vitamin C is, plays a cofactor in the production of collagen, but we need proline, lysine, things like lysine. And that's the peptides that we actually use in the product. So when you combine vitamin C with these, um, they work really well. And they, they keep me looking at my best. <laughs> and then um, I'm a little impartial, but I have to say more recently is Ultimage, because although I've had a hand in um, product development of all of our other products, Ultimage was really my first kind of baby uh, that was my concept, my idea, 
Uh, I got to work on it with our formulator from beginning to end. Uh, Jess certainly helped. Um, and then we had the whole team, Isabel, and everyone internally that, that kind of put the whole thing together. And then our team did a wonderful job with the launch. But, um, you know, it's like it's like creating a, another life, right? They, you put all this, this heart and soul into a product and to see it do so well and be so received um, really was, was quite amazing. So Altamage has become my, I would say, my very close second, second. or almost a tie with C peptides. And those are my two go-to products around that, outside of that. In the fall, after the summer, I'll use some hydroquinone-based products, non-hydroquinone-based products. And I fold in the scrub. We have the scrub in the shower. Um, there's many products that I use and I love, but I'd have to say those are my two, my two go-tos. So I'm going to ask, and then the third part of that, because I know that most recently, uh, you guys have had to change quite a bit of the way you operate because of what's going on with COVID. And Nathan's going to get to COVID right next. But I want to know one thing over the course of 20 years. Is there something that you felt you did at the wrong time or that should have been done at an earlier time or at a later time? Was there something that you've looked at as an obstacle that you overcame with as a company? Yeah, there were, there's been many. Um, but more recently, I think these are the these are the times that really define leadership. They really define companies. Um, and the biggest thing that's changed right now um, in the last couple of years and through COVID is, is the consumer, right? At the end of the day, this whole game is not about, the, you know, our, our physicians and the physician group and Vivier. It's about our patients, right? It's about the end user. And the end user has the money and they're the ones that make ultimately a decision Um we know now that you know, everyone's being bombarded. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of different brands out there, um, and they're bombarding um, everyone with those messages. So I think it's just about being clear and concise and understanding how the consumer has changed. And that's, you know, what we've done. We've, we've changed and adapted our business model, our products, our offering, our messaging, our marketing, and that's really in response to a changing consumer. I look at myself, how I consume and how I buy groceries from a couple of things that I've had to pick up at Home Depot. I used to go into the store. Now I buy online and I pull up a stall number 10 and they put it in the back of your car for you, right? So exactly. literally eight weeks ago, how I consumed and how I shopped versus how I shop now is my buying habits and, and, and everything has changed. So I think the businesses that are, are quick and nimble and able to change to meet consumer demand and consumer needs are always going to win. Those who ignore customers and consumers and trends and can't change fast enough, those are unfortunately the companies that are going to die moving forward. I love that answer. And you've touched on COVID more from a, a business point of view, just in that uh, answer to the question there. But I'd like to take you back to 2019, sorry, start of 2020, January. We're at national sales meeting. Mike Vivier is probably living his best life, right? Um, 20 years in business with his parents. He's got two beautiful kids, a beautiful wife at home, uh, a very successful team around him at work. And little do we know in a couple of months' time, uh, a virus like COVID-19 would hit our world and, and really, really, really shake us up as, a, as not just a country, not just a small community, but as a world, I would love to know from your point of view through this experience, because you're a very extroverted guy, you're similar to me. Um, what is one thing you've taken from this virus that you're going to change in your personal life moving on? That's a great question. I mean, um, 2019 was a phenomenal year for us all. I mean, our team had just a world of success where we hit the pinnacle of 20 years. We, you're right. We have a beautiful sales meeting and uh, we're celebrating and everyone's on top of the world. Uh, we started 2020 in an incredible way. As you know, I mean, we're poised and came out of, out of 2019 into 2020 thinking that this was going to be, um, you know, again, at one of our best years yet. And in an instant, in an instant overnight, everyone's world gets turned upside down. Um, I guess the best way I can answer that is just to say that one thing I've learned with everything is that if everything was great all the time, 
that wouldn't be good. And if everything was bad all the time, that wouldn't be great either. So life, uh, relationships, marriages, friendships, you name it, everything has its ups and its downs. And I think what happens is we always plan for the good and we always, you know, consume like tomorrow is going to be an amazing day. Um, but it might not be, right? So one of the things that I've done always is try to plan uh, my life, my finances, and everything around the fact that things can go south for many reasons. It could be a virus. It could be a financial crisis. I mean, things change. So I've tried to live my life that way and try to prepare for those times. What I've learned through all this is that it is almost, and I, I don't know, if, I mean, disgusting is a strong word, but how we consume and how much we consume. You know, you realize that you're able to work from home, you're able to work in smaller offices. I look at our space and you know, when time is great, you, we take so much space, we use so much, we just consume. And this is really focused, um, I know our family and myself back to what's really essential, what do we really need? What's really gonna make us happy? And it's not things. It's, and, and what I've learned many, many years ago, and that's why I love the great outdoors, I love to hunt and fish, and I love to, to go on, and, on adventures, is that if we can't take the time to enjoy the small things, we're never going to have the time to enjoy the large things. So just having time with my family, just when it's a nice sunny day, and we're able to go for a walk through the woods, uh, we have several really nice bird feeders in the back, we've been uh, you know, bird watching in a sense, like cardinals and uh, blue jays. I mean, just wonderful birds. And so taking the time to enjoy the small things that are right in front of you, um, it is where we're really finding a lot of satisfaction. And I think that's a real big key to happiness. And uh, we just simplified our lives and we cut out all the stuff that we didn't need. That's amazing. Let's talk, um, let's talk about mental health because I think it's a, it's a big issue that we are much more aware of in today's date and time. And I think, though, you know, a lot of people being closed up at home with a lot of fears about <clears throat> job security, bills, finances, life, being stuck with your partner 24-7, you know, can <laughs> have my, a total My poor wife. My, how she does it? I don't you know. know. Like these parents that are homeschooling their children into virtual classrooms that don't know anything about computers or all the technical stuff that may be going, regardless of your class and 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 age, and there's a lot of stuff that's happening right now. What are some of the coping mechanisms you use both professionally and at home? Yeah, it's a really good question because you know, as 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 leaders of a business or a company you're often taught that you can't show any kind of weakness, right? Mm -hmm. And that you have to be kind of always that steady rock. You can never be too emotional, can't be under emotional. Um, you can't say too much, you can't say too little. You always have to be kind of um, on point, right? But everyone deals with anxiety. I'd be lying to you if I didn't say that I, I we're all people, right? It is stressful right now. We're all going through anxiety. Um, there's many triggers and things that can create anxiety. Um, I think going back to what I was saying, finding the, th the, the joy in the small things has and, and, and spending the time to enjoy the things that we have versus the things that we don't have is a key. Music has been a great outlet. I think everyone needs an outlet. So whether that's reading a book, going for a walk, uh, jumping on the Peloton, Nathan. Um, Peloton. Peloton. Did you get one too? No. Uh -huh. oh, look at me, George. Does it look like I have a Peloton? I don't have one either, buddy. You have a Peloton. It looks like Nathan. <laughs> Does Nathan have a backyard smoker? No, I don't. I wish I did. The only thing I did last week is I started running. I first ran out of some beer, and then I had to run to the store to get some more. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you gotta have outlets everyone has to have something that they can do to get their mind off different things 
and to be able to relax and to reduce anxiety and to reduce stress. So the other thing is trying to get good sleep, um, stay hydrated, eat well, exercise, um, you know, do things that you love. And the thing, I, I was talking with a couple of people that, that have been really struggling with some mental issues and mental health through this, and they have loves and passions. And they feel that they, they, like they, they didn't work doing it because they had to go do it for an hour or two, or it's going to take too much time or it's, but it's about finding things I think that you can do for five minutes, 10 minutes, you know, multiple times during the day. The nice thing about a guitar is I could be in between meetings here at home. I start usually at 7 a.m. and I go to 7, 8 o'clock at night. But that doesn't mean that, you know, uh, in the middle of the day, I'll take 15 minutes to just play a song. And then so, I'll take a little bit of time to have a nice quiet lunch. Then I go back to work and then I might play for 15 minutes. Or you go for a walk for five minutes, right? So it's, I think it's taking little intervals and little things that works for you. And, and it's really everyone has a different key. It's finding out what works for you. Um, but if you don't have those outlets and that fear and stress and anxiety builds, it's compounded, right? You start, you don't eat well. You, you, all of a sudden, we're not sleeping well. We don't drink enough water. And it just, it, it, it's a spiral and it becomes extremely hard to get out of. But it affects everyone. Every, uh, there's not one person at this point in time due to this current situation that cannot say that they're not dealing with anxiety. They're not dealing with fears. They're not dealing with stress. Like, right. it's very real. It's very present. And it's something we need to talk about. And it's okay for everyone to talk about it. It's okay for leaders to say, you know what? I'm, I'm okay. We're going to get through this and we're fine. But you know what? I have certain levels of stress just like anyone else. Of course. I want you to um, tell me the last song you sang in your shower. Oh, boy, that's a really good one. Um, do I have to honestly answer that question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It might have been. It's, it's definitely a Boys to Men song. Which one? Oh, I don't even want to say. for us. I'll leave it at Boys to Men. It was a Boys to Men song, and it was not very good. I need I need a couple of lines. My mental health needs a couple of lines. So does mine. Oh, uh, you guys want me to do it? Live on Skin Diffuse. Come on, you can do it for us, Mike. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I can't. <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike. Mike, Mike. You, people pay me to stop, guys. I, I play instruments. I don't sing. <laughs> okay, next time we get you on the show, can you promise us you bring the guitar and you sing us a chorus or two? I absolutely can do that for you, yeah. Actually, uh, uh, outside of that, I've been singing randomly, and I don't know why, but a fair amount of Tom Petty in the shower as well. Okay, so you know what? Next time we get you on your show, we'll get you with your brother. He can play the drums, you can play the guitar. There you go. Perfect. I love that. All right. I think all we should do is we, we should write a little skin reviews jingle for you. That would be that would be amazing. So we've had a few guests that tell us they make up songs on the spot, but no one has made up a couple of line jingle about skin reviews. So I think you need to blow them out of the park. We're doing that. <laughs> all right. We are up to our favorite part of the segment, which is the quick fire questions. All right, okay. you ready? I'll, answer, I'll try my best, guys. Answer quickly. One word answers, Max, if you can. All right, here we go. Red or blue? Blue. Black or white? White. Green or red? Red. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Squirrels or skunks? Squirrels. Mom or dad? Mom. Steve oh. or mom? Steve or who? Steve or mom? Mom. Favorite drink? Old fashions. Uh, stuck in isolation for 12 more weeks. You take one person with you. Who is it? Probably you. Coffee <laughs> or tea? Pardon me? Coffee or tea? Oh, my God. I love coffee. Nathan or me? I would say George. I have, it has to be George. Oh! oh, the <laughs> oh. And the only reason why is because George makes my belly uh, hurt from laughing so much, but... But it's, uh, it was just one of those things. What everyone doesn't know is that my mom and dad 
So George is so likable. We all know that George is the most likable person ever. And you are as well, Nathan, life of the party. Um, however, when George first started working for Vivier, what people don't know is that he tried to weasel his way into the family and he ended up doing a pretty darn good job at it. So he's very tight with my mom and very tight with my dad. And Steve and I have like, we've had many like conferences on this. We've been through this and we are a hundred percent convinced that our parents love uh, George more than they love Steve and I. <laughs> He's like the son that they just wished that they had, and then they had Steve and I. Like they just didn't, it just didn't happen for them. I will take it. So yeah, they, 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 they love both of you guys, obviously. Um, but, we love. Uh, we do I'll, love. I can see that one, George. You win that one. I'll let you have that one. But if it's a night out on the town, it, I, it that's a Nathan. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> It's like a one to two nighter where we just go for forty eight hours straight. Nathan, Nathan, we're go, we're gonna go do that, Nathan. Yeah, as soon as this isolation, as soon as this isolation is over. So we normally end this show with two questions. You've already answered one of them, which is your your favorite skincare routine. But the the last question is, who would you like to see on our show in the future, and can you help uh, us get them on the show for us? Sure, and this was actually. It was actually funny. I was joking with my wife tonight. I was like, you should go on the show. And then I'm like, that's a terrible idea. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> so forget that. But you know what? I actually think that um, it'd be great to get Steve on the show. Okay. We'd love it. We'd love it. We'd love it. Yeah. I think you can, you can I get to my younger, uglier brother. I will accept on one condition. What's that, George? You come with your guitar. You guess, you guess do a song with that jingle. I will. I, I tell you what, we'll do a song and uh, we will write you a jingle. Amazing. We'd love to have Steve on. He's an amazing guy. Yeah, and I love, that'd be great. Before I let George take away uh, the finishing touches of the show, Mike, I'd just like to personally thank you and uh, the Viviers for allowing George and I to do this side project and, and launch this platform because, as you know, being extroverts, George and I being a little bit anxious about the situation, we needed a, a, a project like this to keep us busy in the evenings and and uh, get us through this time. And, and we're, we're thoroughly enjoying it and loving having guests like you on the show. And thank you once again for being on the show, mate. It's It's been outstanding. Thank you for having me. I, look, I, I applaud your creativity. And, I mean, uh, Skin Interviews is great. I, I will always support uh, everyone in following loves and passions. And, I mean, this is a great forum. You've had incredible guests on. I've been watching. It's been fantastic. Uh, I know Skin Interviews is going to grow and just continue to be successful. So I wish you guys the best of luck with it. And uh, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. A big round of applause at home. I know you are laughing as much as we did. To Mike Vivier, Executive VP of Sales and Marketing. Please visit him at VivierSkin.com. Mike. Big shout out to you, man. I can't wait till the next time I actually see you. You know what? We don't get to see each other as often anyways because you're in Montreal. I'm in Toronto. But it feels a little worse during coronavirus. So the next time I see you, I'm probably going to get a letter from HR for giving you guys hugs that last a little too long. <laughs> There'll be no letters from HR. Just be, it's going to be a long hug. A long hug. <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. I'm warning from now. I'm and warning from to, And then straight to the bar. Straight to the bar. <laughs> Always. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching Skin Interviews by Nathan and George. It's always a pleasure to hear your comments, your likes, your shares, to see them out there. If there's somebody you want on our show, please get on our social media. Get on Instagram at skin.turviews and at facebook.com slash skin.turviews. Suggest somebody you'd like us to reach out for to be on our show. Some of you have questions you want to ask your experts or things you want to know about their personal lives how they grew up, where they got to today. If there's something you want us to ask, please go ahead and message us as well. Don't forget, you can find us professionally on LinkedIn as well, both under Vivier and under Skin Interviews. You can also find us on YouTube at Skin Interviews by Nathan and George. It is always a pleasure closing the show because I feel like you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it. Have a wonderful evening. Take care of your families. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you on the next episode of Skin Interviews. Mm -hmm.